Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the stability analysis of cantilever retaining wall from the chapter Earth Pressure Theory. Check the stability of the cantilever retaining wall as shown in figure. The allowable bearing capacity of the soil is 500 kilonewton per meter square. Other properties of the soil are as follows. Phi dash is 36 degree, gamma is 18 kilonewton per meter cube and delta is 25 degree. And also from this figure we can see that the overall height of the retaining wall is 5 meter. The height of the retaining wall below the ground surface is 1 meter. The Thickness of the base slab is 0 0.6 meter. The top width of the stem is 0 0.4 meter. The distance between the toe and the stem is 0 0.5 meter. And distance between the stem and hill point is 2.3 meter. The Surface of the stem towards the toe is inclined and the horizontal distance covered by this inclined slope of the surface is 0 0.2 meter. That means this short distance is 0 0.2 meter. The surcharge angle is 15 degree means angle made by the surface of the backfill with the horizontal surface is 15 degree. Now let us assume that Rankine's theory is applicable for this retaining wall. So this Rankine pressure PA is acting on the vertical line AB. So this vertical line passes through heel point A and active pressure PA is acting along on this line. So the horizontal component of PA is PH and vertical component of PA is PV. So this theory will be applicable only if the shear zone doesn't intersect the stem of the retaining wall. So here let us connect the hill point A with the point C dash which is the point on the top of the stem. So here this these points are connected with the help of this dotted line. The shear zone won't intersect this stem if the shear zone lies within this triangular portion. Means if shear zone is within this triangular portion then only Rankine's theory will be applicable. So angle made by this line A C dash with the vertical line A B is eta. Now let us assume another line say a d such that this line a d marks the boundary of the shear zone. The angle made by this line a d with the vertical is say eta dash. So eta dash should be less than angle eta then only Rankine's theory will be valid because if the value of eta dash is greater than eta then the shear zone will intersect this stem. So let us first ascertain whether this Rankine's theory is applicable to this retaining wall or not. So for that we will first determine the value of eta dash. Now we know the formula for eta dash. We have already discussed in our one of the previous videos. Eta dash is equal to 45 degree plus I by 2 minus phi dash by 2 minus sine inverse of sine I divided by sine phi dash. So here value of I is 15 degree it is such a angle and phi dash is equal to 36 degree. So putting these values in equation we will get eta dash equal to 45 degree plus 15 by 2 
माइनस थर्टी सिक्स बाय टू माइनस साइन इनवर्स ऑफ साइन फिफ्टीन बाय साइन थर्टी सिक्स सो वैल्यू ऑफ ईटा डैश ऑप्टेन विल बी इक्वल टू एट पॉइंट थ्री सेवन फाइव ऑन दी अदर हैंड ईटा इज इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स ऑफ टू पॉइंट थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय फाइव वेयर ईटा इज दी एंगल बिटवीन ए सी डैश एंड ए बी टू पॉइंट थ्री इज दी हॉरिजेंटल डिस्टेंस बिटवीन B dash and C dash. Five is the overall height of the retaining wall. So eta becomes equal to twenty four point seven. So here value of eta dash is eight point three seven five and eta is equal to twenty four point seven. So obviously eta dash is less than eta. That means shear zone does not intersect the stem, and hence Rankine's theory can be applied. so here in this figure instead of ac dash the line ac represents the boundary of the shear zone and hence we can apply rankine's theory to determine the value of active earth pressure pa so pa is equal to half into ka gamma h square so value of ka is obtained by the formula cos i minus Under root of cos square i plus cos square phi dash divided by cos i plus under root of cos square i plus cos square phi dash. So putting value of i equal to fifteen and call value of phi dash equal to thirty six, we will get k a equal to cos fifteen minus under root of cos square fifteen plus cos square thirty six divided by cos 15 plus under root of cos square 15 plus cos square 36 it is equal to 0.438 divided by 1.494 so value of ka obtained is equal to 0.293 so now putting this obtained value of ka in this equation we will get value of pa as pa equal to half into 0.293 into gamma as 18 into height is 5 that's why this is 5 square so pa becomes equal to 65.925 so horizontal component of pa is equal to ph which is equal to pa cos 15 so ph is equal to 63.678 kN and vertical component of pa represented as pv is equal to pa sin 15 so pv is equal to 17.063 kN now we have calculated the value of horizontal component of pa which is equal to ph is equal to 63.678 and we have calculated the vertical component of pa which is equal to pv and it is 17.063 kN now there are other two forces which are acting on this retaining wall the one force is self weight of the retaining wall and another force is weight of soil above the base slab so in order to calculate these two weights we have divided the cross section area of the retaining wall and cross section of this soil above the base slab into five total components the first portion is the rectangular part of the stem the second portion is the triangular part of the stem the third portion is the base slab the fourth portion is the rectangular part of the soil which is above the base slab and the fifth portion is this triangular portion so we know the breadth of this triangular portion now the total height for this triangular portion is equal to 2.31015 which is equal to 0.616 this is the total height of this triangle now let us calculate this weight and 
द मूमेंट ड्यू टू ईच फोर्सेस इन टेब्युलर फॉर्मेट सो हियर वेट डब्ल्यू वन इज इक्वल टू वेट ऑफ द फर्स्ट पोर्शन विच इज अ रेक्टेंगुलर पोर्शन ऑफ द स्टेम सो इट इज इक्वल टू एरिया इंटू डेंसिटी सो एरिया इज जीरो पॉइंट फोर इंटू हाइट हाइट इज फाइव माइनस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स विच इज टोटल हाइट माइनस थिकनेस ऑफ द बेस्ट लैब सो दिस इज द एरिया इंटू डेंसिटी सो डब्ल्यू वन बिकम्स इक्वल टू फोर्टी टू पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फोर लेवर आर्म इज द डिस्टन्स ऑफ द सी जी ऑफ द एरिया फ्रॉम द टो सो डिस्ट लेवर आर्म इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्लस जीरो पॉइंट टू प्लस हाफ ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट फोर सो लेवर आर्म बिकम्स इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन दिस एरिया कॉजेस क्लॉक वाइज मूवमेंट अबाउट टो सो द मूवमेंट इज इक्वल टू फोर्स इन टू लेवर आर्म सो दी मूवमेंट बिकम्स इक्वल टू फोर्टी टू पॉइंट टू फोर इंटू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन विच इज इक्वल टू थर्टी एट पॉइंट जीरो वन सिक्स नाउ वेट डब्ल्यू टू इज द वेट ऑफ द स्ट्रेंगुलर पोर्शन ऑफ द स्टेम सो वेट इज इक्वल टू हाफ इंटू बेस इज जीरो पॉइंट टू इंटू हाइट इज फोर पॉइंट फोर विच इज फाइव माइनस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स एंड डेंसिटी इज ट्वेंटी फोर सो डब्ल्यू टू बिकम इक्वल टू टेन पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स एंड लेवर आर्म इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्लस टू थर्ड ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट टू सो लेवर आर्म बिकम्स इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री थ्री द मूवमेंट ड्यू टू दिस एरिया इज क्लॉक वाइज एंड इट इज इक्वल टू टेन पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स इंटू जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री थ्री सो दिस मूवमेंट बिकम्स इक्वल टू सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स एट फाइव नाउ वेट डब्ल्यू थ्री इज इक्वल टू वेट ऑफ द बेस्ट लैब इट इज द थर्ड पोर्शन सो इट इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स विच इज थिकनेस इंटू थ्री पॉइंट फोर विच इज टोटल ब्रेथ और बेस विथ इंटू डेंसिटी ट्वेंटी फोर सो वेट बिकम्स इक्वल टू फोर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स एंड लेवर आर्म बिकम्स इक्वल टू थ्री पॉइंट फोर डिवाइडेड बाई टू विच इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट सेवन एंड द मूमेंट ऑफ दिस एरिया अबाउट टो पॉइंट इज क्लॉक वाइज एंड इट इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स इंटू वन पॉइंट सेवन विच इज इक्वल टू सेवेंटी नाइन पॉइंट एट थ्री टू नाउ वेट ऑफ द फोर्थ पोर्शन इज दिथ विच इज टू पॉइंट थ्री इंटू हाइट इज फाइव इंटू डेंसिटी ऑफ सॉइल विच इज एटीन सो डब्ल्यू फोर बिकम्स इक्वल टू टू नॉट सेवन एंड लेवर आर्म इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्लस जीरो पॉइंट टू प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फोर प्लस हाफ ऑफ टू पॉइंट थ्री सो लेवर आर्म बिकम्स इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट टू फाइव द मूमेंट ड्यू टू दिस वेट इज क्लॉक वाइज एंड इट इज इक्वल टू टू नॉट सेवन इंटू टू पॉइंट टू फाइव सो मूवमेंट बिकम इक्वल टू फोर सिक्सटी फाइव पॉइंट सेवन फाइव नाउ वेट डब्ल्यू फाइव इज द वेट ऑफ फिफ्थ पोर्शन विच इज ट्रेंगुलर ऑफ द सॉइल सो इट इज इक्वल टू हाफ इंटू बेस इज टू पॉइंट थ्री हाइट इज जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स वन सिक्स इंटू डेंसिटी ऑफ सॉइल सो डब्ल्यू फाइव बिकम्स इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व पॉइंट सेवन फाइव सेवन एंड लेवर आर्म बिकम्स इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्लस जीरो पॉइंट टू प्लस जीरो पॉइंट फोर प्लस टू थर्ड ऑफ विथ विच इज टू पॉइंट थ्री मीटर सो लेवर आर्म बिकम्स इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री थ्री द इट कॉजेस क्लॉक वाइज मूवमेंट अबाउट टो सो मूवमेंट बिकम्स इक्वल टू फोर्स इन टू लेवर आर्म विच इज इक्वल टू थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव एट नाइन नाउ द नेक्स्ट फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन दिस रिटेनिंग वॉल इज हॉरिजोंटल कंपोनेंट ऑफ एक्टिव अर्थ प्रेशर 
it is denoted as pH. We have already calculated the value of pH as 63.678. Now here this active earth pressure Pa is acting along the line AB. So overall length of this line AB is equal to height of the retaining wall which is 5 meter plus height of the strangular portion which is equal to 0.616. So overall length of AB is 5.616. Now this active earth pressure PA is acting at a height of one third of AB. Means this distance is one third of AB. So it is equal to one third of 5.616 it is equal to 1.872 so this 1.872 is the lever arm for the ph so here lever arm for the ph is equal to 1.872 so this horizontal force causes anti clockwise movement and it is equal to 63.678 into 1.872 which is equal to 119.205. Now the next force acting on this wall is vertical component of active pressure which is equal to PV. So we have also calculated the value of PV it is equal to 17.063 and lever arm for this force is the total base width which is equal to 3.4. So this PV causes clockwise movement and it is equal to 17.063 into 3.4. So movement becomes equal to 58.014. Now from this table we can say that total vertical forces acting on this retaining wall is equal to summation of all these forces which is equal to 570.658 kN. Total horizontal forces acting on the wall is equal to 63.678 kN. Total clockwise movement is equal to summation of all these movements which is equal to 681.886 kN meter. And total anti-clockwise movement is 119.205 kN meter. So these are the obtained value from the table. The total vertical reaction is equal to summation of all vertical forces which is equal to 570.65 kN. Total horizontal reaction is summation of all horizontal forces which is equal to 63.678 kN. Summation of total clockwise movement is equal to 681.886. And these are the resisting moments because they resist the overturning moment of the retaining wall. The total anti-clockwise moment is equal to 119.205. It is overturning moment because this moment tries to cause the overturning of the retaining wall. Now the factor of safety against sliding is given by Fs is equal to mu into Rv divided by Rh. So here mu is the coefficient of friction between wall and soil which is present below the wall. So mu is equal to 25. Rv is 570.658 and Rh is equal to 63.678. So factor of safety against sliding is equal to 4.18. The minimum factor of safety against sliding should be 1.5. But here obtained value is 4.18 which is greater than 1.5. That's why the retaining wall is safe against sliding. The factor of safety against overturning is given by FO equal to summation of MR divided by summation of MO. So here summation of MR is equal to 
681.886 divided by summation of mo is equal to 119.205 which is equal to 5.72 so the minimum factor of safety against overturning should be 2 so here obtained value is 5.72 which is greater than 2 hence retaining wall is safe against overturning now let us assume this is retaining wall now because of this vertical and horizontal forces reaction r strikes the base at this point say at point c now the distance of this point c from toe is say x bar the total width of the retaining wall is 3.4 so the center of the retaining wall is somewhere here. So distance of the center from point C is the eccentricity E. Now let us first determine the value of X bar. So X bar is equal to summation of M divided by summation of V. Where summation is of M is the net movement. It is equal to clockwise movements minus anti-clockwise movement. So x bar is equal to 681.886 minus 119.205 divided by summation of v which is equal to 570.685 so value of x bar obtained is 0 0.986 meter now this total distance is equal to b by 2 so eccentricity e will be equal to b by 2 minus x bar which is equal to 1.7 minus 0 0.986 which is equal to 0 0.714 meter now total width is 3.6 meter so b by 6 becomes equal to 3.4 divided by 6 which is equal to 0 0.567 so here value of eccentricity e is not less than b by 6 because value of e is greater than 0 0.576 which is b by 6 so there is tension means this retaining wall is not safe against tension now let us determine the value of p max and p min p max is equal to summation of v divided by b into 1 plus 6e divided by b which is equal to 570.658 divided by 3.4 into 1 plus 6 into 0 0.714 divided by 3.4 so p max obtained is equal to 379.32 kN per meter square and p min is equal to summation of v divided by b into 1 minus 6e by b which is equal to 570.658 divided by 3.4 into 1 minus 6 into 714 divided by 3.4 which is equal to minus 43.639 kN per meter square. So here this negative sign indicates the tension means there is tension at the base of the retaining wall. Also, the factor of safety against bearing failure is given by FB is equal to QNA divided by P max, where QNA is the maximum allowable pressure, which is equal to 500, and P max is the obtained value of maximum pressure at the base of the retaining wall. It is obtained as 379.32. So, value of FB becomes equal to 1.318 so minimum factor of safety against bearing failure is 3 means factor of safety should be more than 3 for retaining wall to be safe so here in this case the factor of safety is 1.3 that means the retaining wall is not safe against bearing failure Thank you for watching.